and welcome. My name is Brian Kaplan. I'm editor of The Banker. And we're at the IMF annual meetings in, in Washington. I'm here with Mrs. Kosha. She's the chief executive of ICIC Bank in India. Um, so we're seeing the Indian economy now facing certain challenges. Um, can you tell us how serious you think those are and what it will mean for the banks? Yes, I think Indian economy is facing certain challenges in the form of growth having slowed down, uh, inflation continues to remain high, interest rates are high, uh, the currency has depreciated sharply in the last few months. Uh, and of course, we have uh, you know the current account deficit, which is high. Uh, but having said that, I must also say that uh, last few months, uh, you know, a lot of steps have been taken, uh, which uh, have shown some positive impact on many of these factors. So, um, the capital flows in the form of deposits uh, in, of FCNR, uh, they have started coming in. Uh, the currency has stabilized a little bit in the last few weeks, uh, and uh, you know, the short-term interest rates have been actually brought down or brought back to the levels of July. Um, imports have come down, exports have gone up. So uh, additionally, there are some measures that are announced by the government in terms of clearances for projects, allowing power projects to import coal. So I would say that uh, while, yes, we have challenges, uh, there are also steps being taken which will gradually have positive impact uh, on the economy. But I think for the long run, what we have to ensure is that we bring back investments in the economy because India has consumption as its on demographics as its very strong fundamental driver for growth. But in order to harness that, we have to continue to invest in infrastructure, in manufacturing capacity, and so on. And that really is the long-term requirement for the economy. Okay, and what about specifically on your bank? And I know you have very low non-performing assets. I think it's 0.62% or something of that order, which is, is phenomenally low. But do you think you'll, you'll see it rise in, in, in the months ahead, or can you keep it at, at that level? Um, actually, if you look at uh, our bank's uh, you know, quality of assets, we have uh, monitored it very tightly, and uh, you know, we are actually in a much better position because we have a large proportion of retail or consumer assets, which has mortgages, vehicle loans, and so on, which have continued to be very, very stable. Uh, we have a very small proportion of uh, SME assets, uh, which are the ones that are actually fail facing pressure in the current economic scenario. And as far as the large projects are concerned or the large corporates are concerned I think while many of them have their challenges but uh, you know the issue is how you monitor them how you handhold those projects till the time some of the issues around raw material coal etc get uh, resolved so I think the banking industry will still face some amount of additions to non-performing assets some amount of restructuring of assets but broadly the situation is not kind of going out of control and as far as we are concerned at our bank, by managing the portfolio very, very judiciously, I think we are quite comfortable. Okay. Now, the new governor of the Reserve Bank of India has taken one or two initiatives, including uh, he's probably going to allow more licenses for, for foreign banks, and also it's going to be easier to set up branches. So that means more competition in the market. How do you feel about that? Uh, first of all, I must say that the new governor has brought about a lot of positive measures. To start with, he actually allowed you know, the swap facilities, which is encouraging the FCNR deposits to come in into the country. Um, he rolled back those sharp increase in the short-term interest rates that were done in July. So that has provided some comfort on the short-term liquidity and interest rate side. Um, then, of course, he's actually made branch licensing absolutely free and is talking about the new bank licenses. Uh, I think that's very good uh, you know, for further opening up the Indian banking sector. I do believe Indian banking sector is quite open, but I think this opens it up even further. Uh, for existing banks like us, yes, you may say that it does bring in more competition, uh, but I think Indian banking industry has always lived under competition for many of these years. Uh, I think there is just so much business on account of India's growth that will be there for the banking system that there is enough scope for a lot of banks. And finally, I think uh, when competition comes in, it uh, you know brings out the best in the existing banks as well as in the new banks, and uh, you know is good for the consumer. So um, I think that uh, you know that for large banks like us, uh, we are quite well established uh, in terms of our branch network, our distribution network, our size, our net worth, and so on and so forth. And uh, as more and more competition comes in, everybody would work to be more and more efficient. But there's enough room for a lot of banks. 
Okay, and uh, ICICI has always been a bit of a leader on the technology front, and I know you've done one or two initiatives um, over the past year or so with uh, on the mobiles with Aircel and Vodafone. Can you tell us a bit about that and how that's going? Yes, uh, you know, with the penetration of mobile telephony in the country, uh, actually a mobile phone is now being used in uh, interiors of India, and uh, you know it's it's also very affordable. Um, and so, therefore, riding on that platform, what we've done is introduced a lot of uh, or enabled a lot of banking services on the mobile phone. Uh, I think initially it started with, and that was many years ago, started with basically push alerts. That is keeping the customer informed of the various transactions that they were doing, uh, uh, you know, across their banking uh, relationship. But from there on, actually, the kind of services that we've offered on the mobile phone have become uh, very exhaustive, very comprehensive. And today, I think the, the biggest use that we make of the mobile uh, telephony uh, in the form of a channel is to really enable remittances to take place even within India, uh, through the interiors uh, of India. So, you know, as you know that there are a lot of those villages uh, where the families reside, uh, but the villagers themselves actually migrate to the urban areas in search of livelihood. And as they earn their livelihood every month, they transmit money uh, you know, in uh, back to their families. And these are villages which may not have a banking branch, which may not have huge ATMs, but as they are able to transmit or transfer money through the mobile phone, I think it just enables banking to reach a much wider um, you know, spread across. Okay, well on that, I mean, you've also been taking a lot of initiatives in terms of establishing branches in the rural areas. Some of these are sort of what you call micro rural branches. Uh, and this is a big thing for India, isn't it, to get out and, 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 and pull in the rural population and the unbanked. So tell us how that is going. Yes, I think, uh, you know, I believe that the entire rural India is really going to be the next growth driver for India. And uh, even within rural India, there are villages that have some banking that is present, but there are a lot of villages or you know a lot of places which are totally unbanked so far, and you know no, there is no banking presence. So what we are doing is uh, broadly two things. One is that increasing our presence or points of presence in these rural areas through multiplicity of channels. So it is not just branches, but actually very very small micro branches, uh, setting up a whole distribution network of business correspondents who represent us in the village setting up low-cost ATMs, uh, setting up various biometric product offerings, uh, you know, which the customers can use and actually transact through a banking system, and of course initiatives like the mobile telephony. Um, so a whole lot of multiplicity of channels, along with that multiplicity of products. So enable these people not just to open a bank account, but to save, to invest, to draw micro credit, to buy micro insurance, and so on. Um, so in that sense, actually today we are present in more than 15,000, uh, you know, villages across the country. We have a very large large network of business correspondence uh, out of our branch network which is in any case the largest branch network amongst the private sector banks in the country half the branches are in rural and semi urban areas and about 10% of the branches are actually in those villages which have been unbanked so far so you know the first time there's a micro branch kind of set up there uh, we have 16 million accounts, uh, which are those basic banking accounts, the ones that I talk about in the unbanked areas for below the poverty line people, uh, where we actually encourage them to get, uh, you know, become a part of the formal banking system. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Kocha. Thank you. I've been talking to the Chief Executive of ICIC Bank at the World Bank Annual Meetings in Washington.